boom, blast off in my time machine. Third eye feeling like a need visine. Blast off, blast off, blast off, blast off. Come blast off in my time machine. Third eye feeling like a need visine. Blast off. Hi everybody, this is Hero Paranormal and I'm super stoked about today. We've got Philip Mantle on, the guy to talk to about this alien autopsy stuff. Um, there's a lot going around. There are new documents uh, which are bringing into question the traditional alien autopsy that we're familiar with and whether or not it's valid again. This is something that everybody thought they had under wraps so we're gonna we're gonna talk to philip he's got a very unique insight and hopefully we have him on the line here let's see well, good afternoon ryan nice to speak to you oh it's great it's great this is uh such a pleasure such an honor um you've got so much information on the subject and i appreciate you making time to talk to me this is All right. no, my pleasure ryan i can assure you this is fascinating. Um, there's so much going around right now. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on all this? Well, I got a tip off from a colleague right at the beginning of this year. I won't, I won't say his name, but he just said, you know, Philip, it's uh, a good time to be involved in these subjects. Uh, and I had no idea what he was talking about, but of course he's been proven to be correct anyway. So <laughs> there you go. It it's true it's a great time to be alive it's you know there's there's so much coming back to the forefront of disclosure i'm 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 surprised at all of these quote unquote leaks and emails and it seems like there's such, it, it's like a snowball rolling downhill, it's gaining momentum, and it just seems like every couple of weeks there's something new. Well, yes, I mean, and, let, and let's hope that continues, Ryan. I mean, you know, having been involved in the subject for several decades now, you know, the subject does have its, its peaks and troughs. It's certainly heading up one of those peaks at the moment. And, you know, it's not that long ago when people, certainly in the media, were saying, oh, UFOs are dead, there's no interest, there's nothing happening, well, hey presto, they no, no sooner said that, and look what happens. That's right, that's right. And it's, the, your interest in, in UFO research began quite a while ago. Yeah, I mean, you let me sound really old there, right, and cheers. <laughs> no, I mean, that, 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 that that's... I'm only joking. No, I, I mean, I, I became interested in uh, all things paranormal as, as, a young, as a young man in my, my formative years as a, as a teenager. I'm 61 now. Um, and I mean, I remember, you know, as a teenager, uh, my best friend's grandmother lived literally right across the road from us. And um, I used to attend, on occasion, the spiritualist church with her. Not because I was a follower, just that, you know, because I was interested. And um, that was a, a sort of a first-hand way, if you like, for someone of my age to, you know, deal in what we would call the paranormal. And, you know, my interest uh, progressed from there. And it, it's still there today, um, you know, four decades on. Uh, you know, it sounds strange to me when I say four decades. That's two thirds of my life I've been involved in this subject. But there you go. You, That's how it all began. That's amazing, and it's it's so true though. It's with anything you're passionate about. It seems like, you know, it it, it time time doesn't really count, and uh, you bl you blink, and and like you said, four decades. It it, it just happens, but you're you're still in it and that's 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 what's amazing um and i mean you you've written the definitive book on the alien autopsy film uh and it's you know by all intents and purposes the most controversial piece of film in the entire history of ufo research 
Well, it certainly is, Ryan. I mean, there's no doubt about that. I uh, mean, you know, I was involved in it right from uh, day one, you know, and, and in the thick of it, and, and got a lot of criticism. I must, I must say, at the time, but that's the way it goes. And, and you know, I've often said it's it's the, the most controversial film of its kind. Um, probably in viewing figures, it's only second to the. Zapruder film of, of the Kennedy assassination and um, again just like ufology in general when you think all interest in this film has, has disappeared for good you know it, it pops up again and, and tends to bite you on the on the backside you know and um, I don't think interest and controversy in the film will ever go away again it will die down it will raise up again uh, but uh, it's certainly doing the rounds again as we speak. And there are, well, I'll just cut to the chase. There's there's talk. You know, everybody's seen, for the most part, if there's some interest. I mean, it, it's been played so much even on the mass media. Um, but every, everybody's most likely seen a snippet of the alien autopsy film. And Mr. Mantle, you... You... you and others, and uh, now, by the looks of it, possibly there is another video. Well, I don't know anything about another video. I mean, I'll, if, for those that are not informed, I'll, I'll, I'll briefly explain how things, you know, panned out. Yeah, in, and in, I, I, not, not to confuse it, but Ray, Ray Santilli, am I saying that correctly? Yes, yes. Is it possible that he's the owner of another film that just hasn't been released into the public domain yet oh he, he does have a film that hasn't been released into the public i mean it's it, it's no secret mm -hmm. i mean i've seen it That's um, amazing. there's only a small handful of that I, I, i've seen it uh, my colleague Maurizio Baiata in italy is one colin andrews of uh, crop circle research has seen it uh, the late Reg Presley's seen it, and possibly one or two others. So there's only a handful actually seen it. It is a you know, another autopsy film. It's the same creature, same room, same personnel mm. with the same suits, etc. So um, so it's it's never been a secret. I mean, I even have a couple of poor quality still images from it in in my in my archive. Um, the only difference between that one and the one that everyone's seen either online or on TV is that there are no um, physical damages to the creature, like there's no leg wound, etc. It runs a couple of minutes longer. It's much clearer. It's a bit brighter to see. And they, they conduct a slightly different medical procedure. Uh, and I've only ever seen it the once, and those are my uh, lasting memories. And I, I've checked with the other gentlemen that i've just mentioned and they, and they remember that as, that as well so but it, but it's there yes that's just so fascinating just the possibility of another video there was so much controversy over well over over the over the one film um and so just the just, well, well, well let's take a step back yes brian and when we talk about ray santilli and his alien autopsy film what i want to make it clear is there actually five separate different films in play here? Ray would like to ignore most of them. Mm. Now, I'll tell you how it all began. In, in 1993, I was, among other things, the press officer for the British UFO Research Association. And uh, a letter crossed my desk one day uh, from a gentleman by the Ray, name of Ray Santilli and the Merlin Productions, or the Merlin Group. Uh, basically, just a general letter asking if you four uh, could assist in the making of a UFO documentary. There was no mention of Roswell, alien autopsies or anything. I replied, this was the day before email, of course. I sent some information. And we had a couple of letters go backwards and forwards. And then I spoke to um, Ray Santilli on the phone. He, his office was in London, I'm up in the north, I'm 200 miles north of, of London, and again, we talked, you know, uh, vaguely about a UFO documentary and what we could or couldn't do for him, 
he was looking to see if we had any film or, or photographs that we could license. In the course of these conversations, Ray Santley went on to say, oh, by the way, I now have film footage of the UFO crash at Roswell and the creatures being dissected. Now, this is probably, you know, 1994 by now. Mm -hmm. So my response was, show me. Uh, and it kind of went, yes, I can, no, I can't, yes, I can, no, I can't, yes, I can, no, uh, anyway. So at the time, Buford used to um, hold uh, lectures and meetings in London at a place called the London Business School, not far from where Ray Santilli's office was. So one evening, we were actually hosting a, uh, a presentation by Travis Walton and Mike Rogers from Fire in the Sky. Mm -hmm. um, the film had op was opening in the UK and they were here to promote it. So I invited Ray Santilli along and, and I spoke to him there for the first time. He told me about being in Cleveland, Ohio, looking for old film of the old rock and roll stars before they became famous. He claimed he bought some off an old guy. The old gentleman was then a former military cameraman who said, I've got some Roswell footage if you're interested. Ray said, I took an internal flight, viewed this, saw his, his military papers, his photos on his wall, met his family, etc., etc. So we shook hands on a deal. So that was the story he told. So again, the, the question was, well, show me. It's a great story. Just show me. So it went on, yes, I can, no, I can't, yes, I can, no, I can't. So I basically said, Ray, look, I don't believe you, you know. And then in, in early 1995, I was sent a, a movie for review. It was Roswell, made by Paul Davids. It was being released in the UK by, by Sony, I believe. Only a small release, but they sent us a review copy. And I thought, oh, I wonder if that chap Santilli still claims to have this Roswell footage. Now, he'd given me his business card, which I kept, so I picked it out of the folder, gave him a ring, and he says, yes, I do have it, Philip, but, but you don't believe me. I said, well, I can't believe you until you show me. So he said, okay, make an appointment with my secretary, come to London, I'll show you. So my, I made the appointment, my wife and I uh, went to London, and over the next coming months, we were shown four different films by Ray Santilli. The first one, it's called the tent footage. It's a very dark piece of film. lasts about, I think, about 12 minutes. Um, you see a creature on a slab, but it's, it's covered. You can just see the head and the, the hands and the feet. Uh, to the far side, there are two men in white coats. Seem to be playing with some fleshy material. Occasionally, a man with his back to the camera, the camera's static, walks in front of the camera and then out of it. And there's an old lamp hanging from the ceiling. Santilli said this was a, an examination of one of the dead aliens at Roswell, actually on site at the crash scene. So hence there's no electricity. It's in a field tent, if you like. Mm. Um, in the coming months, he then went as to show us two separate autopsy films, as I described earlier. And then the fourth film was uh, debris. It's wreckage, you know, from the crash, allegedly. And then much later on, there was supposedly a, an interview with the, the mysterious cameraman. Basically, it's an old boy sat in a room with a list of questions in front of him, and he just reads, he just gives off the answers to the questions. So we're actually dealing with five separate films, Ryan, not just the one and not just, not just two. So um, what I did, uh, I was also viewed for as... Um, a conference organizer and in 1995 they already had a conference set up in Sheffield so I invited Ray to show the film at the conference and he agreed mm -hmm. and we shook hands on it and he turned up on the day showed it and it went around the world the following day on television he'd then done all the TV deals so that's how it all came out so fascinating the the fact is, he, you know, Ray wasn't, he, as far as being with his pulse on everything, he was right there. I mean, he was doing all kinds of stuff with people like Bob Marley and, um, 
you know, spiritual journey, Elvis Presley. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, Ray has a huge collection of, of pop memorabilia. Uh, for example, I was in his office one day and he had a shoebox there. And he was, you know, overjoyed. And he took he, this shoebox, he bought at auction and was a box full of unpublished photographs of the Beatles, for example. <laughs> now, I don't think he ever worked one-on-one -on -one with Bob Marley or anything like that. What Ray did, he made videos about them. He would license bits of film from companies and put them together. Music was his main industry. He would license people's back catalogs or he would get a, a band together that had had hits and maybe re-record some stuff. That's how he met, for example, Reg Presley. Reg was the lead singer of the Trogs. Uh, and Reg wrote the song... Love is All Around, which was a huge hit many, many years later, of course. Uh, sadly, Reg is no longer with us. Um, so, you know, his office was on Balcombe Street in, in London, and it was three or four floors in this office, people running up and down the stairs. But so it was, you know, it was a small business, but he seemed to be doing okay. It's Yeah, he, he really, I mean, he was involved with a lot of... A, a, a lot of culturally the top names at the time, you would think that he would have connections that like this, this footage, you know, this could come ac across his desk, so to speak, or especially it, it sounds like he was out there looking for it or looking to make it. And it seems like it, at least with ufology, a lot of this has come, this is just mind blowing because I mean, there's, Issues with the organs, for example, and some of the f footage people have talked about the examination on site, like you said, with no electricity, you know, less light, harder to tell. I mean, that's just fascinating. And if it's really debris in the field that they're checking with bodies, then this has kind of come full circle with the whole gimbal footage. And I mean, I mean, they look like similar craft, whether reverse engineered or not. Well, you know, Ray was a buyer and seller and, um, when I, when I was first in touch with him, I asked him what he intended to do with this footage. And he made it quite clear and open to anyone who was, you know, asking. He wanted to commercialize it. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, Ryan, he, um, he was going to place it on video uh, and just sell it, you know, make his own little documentary. I even wrote the documentary for him. Uh, and he did, he did have that available. So in the early days, there was no television involved. Nothing like that. It was purely once the, the the news of the film leaked out by accident, and it seemed to you know take on a life of its own. It, it took us all by surprise, and that in, that includes Ray Santilli. He, he he even had to set a gentleman on by the name of Chris Carey to to help uh, with the negotiations with the television and the contracts and so on. I mean, we were swamped quite literally, uh, and the conference that we showed it at. You know, we could have filled the, the, the university it was in three times over, you know, no problem at all. But um, Ray then faltered on a, on a number of uh, points. First off, I mean, I, w I was literally reviewing some of my old correspondence with Ray last night. And he made numerous promises to provide not just me, but one or two others with... Uh, frames of film that had image of the creature on it or the wreckage that we could have tested to prove its, its age. Mm -hmm. um, I, I even lined up Kodak here in the UK. They're in Hemel Hempstead in Hertfordshire, only a short drive from where Ray actually lived at the time. Uh, close to uh, Kodak here, we also have the British Film Institute. They'd even ha offered to assist Ray uh, uh, at the time. I mean, he couldn't literally drove to the place and walked in and handed it over himself. You know, if he was, if he thought someone, he didn't trust anybody, well, he could have done it himself. He lived that close to it. But of course, he, he declined the offer. He fudged it and fudged it and fudged it. Uh, I kept saying that Kodak had already authenticated it when they hadn't. Uh, and again, I've reviewed my correspondence on that just to make sure uh, I'm not just relying on my memory. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it's like, it's like you saying, oh, Ryan, I've, I've got a, you know, a, a Leonardo da Vinci painting in my attic, but I've not had it authenticated. Then people will say, well, you're dumb. <laughs> you know, 
if it's the real McCoy, it's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And you say, no, I'm not going to have it tested. I'm just going to leave it there. Well, it's the same with Ray and his film. Had it been authenticated, then you could have named your price. It would have been the most valuable piece of film on earth. But that didn't happen. So what I um, sort of agreed with myself, if you like, is that to Ray and in public, I would support the film's authenticity. But behind the scenes, I was trying my damnedest, working with colleagues around the world, uh, to try and get to the bottom of it. And, you know, when I saw it, I thought, this film needs to get out into the public domain. That's why I asked Ray to show it at our conference, knowing full well it would attract media attention. We, what we didn't know is that in between, you know, the media would become interested and it would be sold to television companies around the world. So once the film got out, uh, you know, in, into the general public, I was expecting somebody somewhere to come forward mm -hmm. and say I'm one of the actors in that or I supplied the props or it was my studio it was filmed in whatever or alternatively um, my grandfather told me about this and, and I believe that's my grandfather you know or whatever but nothing I mean absolute silence literally the tumbleweed scenario right mm -hmm. not a thing one way or the other and and by this time the, the the, the, the internet, uh, it was in its infancy, and um, it was the first UFO battle online, if you like, with, with you know, comments going backwards and forwards across, around the world, and, and that's how it all began. It, it, it is, from its very inception, it, it's been very polarizing for, for, you know, the UFO community, because there's the issue, if it's real... Or if there is any validity to, you know, snippets of the film or another one being real, whether and now there is communication that there, there is a good possibility of that. And if it's real, you have issues with ufology. And then if it's not real, you have issues with ufology. And I always tend to be very careful when something like people people claim something is totally debunked because you run into this so often and and it's usually with the very most important stuff and it, it in my opinion i mean at the time that some of these snippets of this film have gotten out there were doctors and pathologists and multiple you know uh medical personnel who believed that this was real and a living being just because of decompression and the way a body would react and you know, what they were looking at on film. So if, you know, obviously everybody agrees that if it was hoaxed and, or the parts that were hoaxed were done very well. However, what, where was the information coming from, you know, to be done so well? It, it seems like there is like that tie or that connection to, he had a very real connection to uh, someone who had possibly seen alien bodies or had alien bodies or was in possession or, or, or could get them, or at least footage, to him. Well, you know, that would be lovely if it was true, Ryan, but unfortunately it's not. I mean, what happened was the first thing, um, when Santilli sold uh, a package to Fox, for example, for their show Alien Autopsy Fact or Fiction, mm -hmm. it included the tent footage, one, one, one autopsy film and the wreckage, the debris film. At the last minute, Ray pulled the tent footage with a, a wishy-washy explanation that now, I mean, we, you know, we'd already been talking about this for uh, coming on two years. Mm -hmm. He said the cameraman wasn't sure about that. So there was something fishy there. Uh, we moved forward in time. Uh, and I was contacted by a gentleman and he said, I know something about the alien autopsy film. So we spoke and he told me that the tent footage had actually been made by a company called AK Music. AK stood for Andy and Keith, Keith being Keith Bateman. So I tracked down Mr. Bateman and I interviewed him and he said, yes. And he told me 
you know, and I've even inter interviewed the gentleman who made it. He said, we used to have, he said, I didn't work for Ray Santilli. We used to work together sometimes. And, and Keith's main business was um, karaoke videos. And he said, well, I'm in a chat one day and somebody said, one of my colleagues said, wouldn't it be great if we had some Roswell film? Because he was reading a book about Roswell. So that gentleman was called Philip Yarman. I've interviewed Philip. And it lit a light bulb in Keith's mind. Um, and Keith went away and actually made the tent footage in a barn in Bedfordshire. Uh, the two doctors in white coat are actually his employees. One of them's called Elliot, for example. Mm. Uh, the guy you see walking in front of the camera on occasion is the farmer. <laughs> and so Keith told us, uh, and his employees, not just Keith, uh, that he took this tent footage film, which, which was originally shot in colour, uh, and, and then changed to black and white on the computer, Took it to Sam Tillensley, what about this alien autopsy? Ray said, I'm sorry, but that's not good enough. We need something much clearer, much brighter. Go away and, and get me a, um, you know, a, a quote of how much it would cost to make some real stuff. So Keith came back with a quote. Sam Tillensley said, no, that's too much. Thank you very much. But he kept hold of the, the tent footage. And, and when I met Ray, that was the first piece of film he showed me. Same with the other gentleman I mentioned. It was the one he, he showed them. He actually gave me a copy on video, which I still have to this very day. Then, quite by chance, we move forward in time now to early 1995. He's already invented this story of this mysterious cameraman. Mm -hmm. he, he met with a gentleman called Spiros Morales at a, a uh, TV festival in France. Uh, and Ray told him this fanciful story. So when they got back home, Spiros went to see him, and, and Ray again showed him the tent footage, and then Spiros said, that's fake, you know, that's not shot on film, that's shot on video. Mm -hmm. So Ray gave him this story about he'd paid a lot of money for this, etc., which he hadn't. Um, so Spiros, uh, Spiros Molaris was a magician, a filmmaker, uh, he's an artist, um, he's got a number of strings to his bow, but in those days he was a... He was a filmmaker, uh, but he said, I'll tell you what, I can make you something very convincing. My best friend is a top-rate sculptor called John Humphreys. So they agreed on it. Uh, Ray's business partner, a German by the name of Volker Spielberg, put up the money, which was £30,000. They actually uh, designed it, Spiros designed it, uh, built the set in his uh, his sister's apartment in Camden in London, because she was having it renovated anyway. So, it, you know, and he got his girlfriend in on the act. She did all the medical research. Uh, his, his friend was involved. His brother was involved. And they, and John Humphreys made the creature, made the dummies. Now, the first one they made, uh, when they played it back, um, Spiros's uh, girlfriend, who've done the medical research, says, we've done that wrong. There's a, some medical technique they did was wrong. And they said, if that goes out, nobody will believe that. So by this time, they'd spent the whole budget. So Spiros says, don't worry, I'll pay for another one doing tomorrow. So they reset the mold, made another dummy. This time, the dummy turned out again with a fault on it. They had a big hole, a big air pocket in its leg. So they improvised. They got to the butchers, got some bones and some bits and pieces, mm -hmm. stuck that in there, burnt it, uh, and filmed another one. And that one is the one that everyone has seen on television or online or wherever. The first one they made, no one has seen apart from a handful of us. They then went on to make the debris film. Now, the difference is what Spiros is telling us is that there was no film Ray did not have any original film. There was no images to work from. He designed it with some input from John Humphreys. Um, John being a sculptor had studied anatomy and things like that. And um, the idea was that they would release it into the public domain, say nothing, but then six months or so down the line, they would all come out and say, 
this is how we did it. Da-da. And hopefully, you know, he would get some more work from that. Maybe John Humphreys would and so on. But every time he went back to Ray Santilli, he said, how are we doing? Ray said, oh, we've not made any money at it. I'm still trying to make my original money back. There was no original money. Spurs not interested in the subject, a busy man. His business was, you know, was doing well. So off he went. Uh, and basically, you know, didn't really care too much about it. And, and that's how the alien autopsy came into being, Ryan. There is no film. Right. Uh, despite whatever Santilli or his pal Gary Shufield may say, it just does not exist, I'm afraid. Do you believe there's been some rumors, and, and, and there's so many rumors uh, it, on, on all sides of this, like, like we spoke, it's so polarizing just because the, the possibility, I think, gets people so excited. And... But there has been some talk. Do you think anything that Ray was into was possibly disinformation or he was involved with some kind of psyop or? Not at all. I mean, Ray was a small time businessman operating out of um, a former uh, dwelling in, 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 in London, uh, just, off, just off the West End. Um, certainly wasn't... Um, rolling in money, although his business was doing okay by the look of it. I mean, I don't know. But uh, same with Spiros. Spiros was a, you know, uh, say a magician uh, and, a, and a filmmaker. There's no connection. I went to Spiros. I didn't believe Spiros, of course, when he, I finally tracked him down many years later. I went to his home. He showed me his diaries from the time. He actually, um, um, quite a good artist. So he painted a storyboard. Uh, how, he, uh, how this was going to be made. I saw his faxes that he had from Kodak, checking on what edge code they would need on it. Uh, he had a huge box full of, uh, or a file full of uh, pictures of US military vehicles. And he said he was going to actually use one of them in another piece of film because right at the early days, Ray, somebody asked Ray Santilli why he thought it was genuine. And he said, it was when I saw President Truman on the film you could see him so clearly, you could read his lips. Of course, Truman's nowhere to be seen. Uh, so what uh, Spiros wanted to do was to uh, film a, a, a crash scene with a saucer in the background and a military truck that he was going to make. And that particular truck, the, the reason he chose it, because you could see the, the license plate on the back. So if you went and checked in the record centre, you would be able to find that that was a, a genuine military truck, not something just invented. And um, he'd even got someone to play Truman. They were just going to do his face with prosthetics uh, and tell him what to say, although you wouldn't be able to hear it. There was no, going to be no sound. But if you got a lip reader, then you could read his lips. But, but that never happened. But that was, that was in the planning. And, um, uh, and all kinds of other things Spiros showed me. So he could support what he was saying with his documentary evidence. Uh, whereas Santilli... Um, could not support anything. Here's a few little poses for you just to think about, mm -hmm. Ryan. For although, when you see the film, you see the creature laid out on the table, you see a, 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 a column of doctor and a nurse, the doctor cuts it open, the nurse assists. Behind it, on the wall, is a, a, a glass window with a person behind the window. Now, if you look at that person behind the window, He's wearing a surgical mask. Why would he need to wear a surgical mask if he's already behind a glass window? Mm -hmm. When you look at the doctor and the nurse, they're in these white um, biohazard suits, if you like. When you look at the slit they've got to see through, they're operating on the, the most important creature that's ever been on Earth, and they can hardly see what they're doing. Well, the reason for this is because if you have the big open... Uh, um, facial panel on a biohazard so you can see the people's faces same with the gentleman behind the window no reason for him to be wearing a surgical mask the mask is there to hide his face it's actually a gentleman called Gareth Watson by the way <laughs> so not only that when you look at the biohazard suits and no one anybody listening to this does not have to believe me they can do their research themselves today Check out the biohazard suit that they're wearing in the alien autopsy film. Go and see if you can find one that's identical. You won't be able to find it, 
because Ray Santilli made the suits, they are a one-off. And he still has one, actually. So you won't be able to find them. So are you going to say that they would make special biohazard suits just for this event? That would take however long to make. You know, so they couldn't make on the base. Would you not just use the normal biohazard suit that was available? Why would the gentleman behind the glass be wearing a surgical mask? He's, you know, doesn't make any sense. Uh, so that'll just give you some little things to look at. You don't have to trust me. You, you can do your own research there. Um, so there is no connection with any form of intelligence. This is not disinformation. You know, Ray milked it for every penny he could make, and he made a lot of money out of it. Mm-hmm. And of course, in 20, uh, sorry, in 2006, he even made a movie which he made even more money out of. A lot of people in the States may not have seen that. It's simply called Alien Autopsy. Um, and again, now that the, the leaked documents, the memo to, to Bob Bigelow has uh, surfaced, mm-hmm. I'm actually even named in, in the memo. My name's in there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, 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 you know, it's Santilli has popped up again with his pal Gary Shufield. Shufield lives and works now in the, in the States. Uh, and if he can, he'll make another payday out of it. He will make all the same promises he made originally. Oh, yeah, I could give you a bit of film for this, that, and the other. But it won't, it, it won't happen. It can't happen because there is no film. It is so funny. Yeah, the, I, everything you're saying is on point, on target. The, you know, I've gone through that film so many times, and there are so many questionable, and even just... Every point that you, every point that you just made, you know, is, is 100% accurate. And it's, it it is kind of a tempting intrigue with this, with this new, uh, I get, I guess, release of information, um, you know, by, it looks like, like you said, Bigelow and Eric Davis pertaining to the uh, alien autopsy film. And, you know, the memo, like you said, contains names and activities and places. And again, you're absolutely right, Santilli. This is his statement. It was after, uh, make sure I get this right. After he, he maintained that there was still, that it was a hoax, but it was a restoration of an original footage undertaken with great expertise. Basically, he says that the film is a remarkable statement to a unique event, but again gives no evidence supporting you know where his where he saw this or where he well if you think about it right let, let's let's assume for the sake of argument here that Ray Santilli is telling the truth okay mm-hmm. now we go back to remember he first contacted me in 1993 about about this and the cameraman was already his cameraman was already a, a, an elderly gentleman then so we now jump forward all these years. Surely, if he was su- such a person existed, he would be now be deceased. So there would be no reason why Ray Santilli could not release the name of the gentleman so that whoever, you, me, could go and check his military career, you know, get his records or someone. Um, because he essentially did release a, a statement allegedly by the cameraman saying, I worked on this and I worked on that. Uh, and when they were checked, there was everybody that worked on those particular projects was accounted for. There was no mysterious cameraman, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so, you know, again, there's no reason why Santilli, after all these years, uh, couldn't support what he's saying with some information. He said there was great expertise used in the, in inverted commas, recreation. Who were these experts? Who made it? If if it's true what he is saying, then it's a remarkable job to take scraps of film and then from those scraps of film make, remember this, because Ray likes people to forget. Not a lot of people remember, know this, they not only made one autopsy film, they made two. Mm -hmm. So if you were going to make a restoration, Ryan, why on earth would you make two? And two that are different as as well. It's like if if you were a a painting 
expert in restoring paintings. And I asked you, oh, you know, we had a we had a fire in the Louvre, and we, we need we need the Mona Lisa restored. It's got a little bit of damage to it. You won't make two. You know, you won't have Mona Lisa with, you know, sat, smiling, and the other one, you know, sticking the finger up. You know, two different Mona Lisas. You'd stick to the one you've got. Why make two? Mm-hmm. And who were the experts he used? That's I heard Gary Shufield on on the on on the on online the other day. That's that's Ray's business partner. He said Kodak had confirmed it. My friend in the States, Mark Center, spoke to Kodak. The the actual person that they they contacted. Basically, Shufield walked in off the street uh, in Hollywood to uh, uh, to Kodak. They saw a gentleman called Lawrence. I think it's Lawrence Kate. And they said, can you, can you identify it? They, they gave him a bit of film with no image on it and just identified the edge codes on it. Kodak used edge codes for, for the years. And that was it. Their encounter with um, Kodak lasted about 20 seconds. You know? Mm-hmm. But, but Shufield said, we had Kodak and other experts. But the gentleman he was speaking to didn't follow that up and say, which other experts got it? Tell me. You know, and you say, oh, he would have then probably said something like, oh, we're not allowed to mention it. It was behind closed doors. It was all wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You know, you know, the experts don't exist. Kodak did not authenticate it. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so why we're in this position now, Ryan, is because in the in the memo that was has been leaked, it was sent to Bob Bigelow. Various people mentioning it, copied in it. But it's basically clarifying the points by Dr. Kit Green. Kit Green worked for the CIA on their so-called weird desk. Very well qualified gentleman, MD, PhD, and so on. And he claims, uh, and I'm not discounting his claims. I'm, I, 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 have no, I cannot do that because I don't know. But in one of them, he said he was shown autopsy, I think it's autopsy photos by the CIA which are exactly the same as the alien autopsy film. And, you know, therefore it must be real. Well, it, it, they can't have been exactly the same because he's claiming he was shown these items, in, I believe, in the 1980s. And the alien autopsy film was not conceived until 1995. It didn't exist in any form until 1995. So I'm not accusing uh, Dr. Green of lying or anything like that. In fact, you know, in my book, uh, Roswell Alien Autopsy, I have a number of people in there who claim to have seen this film prior to 1995. However, the interesting part is why none of them actually went on the record prior to 1995. They only came out and said this after the film had been on television. So I would, I would say perhaps, you know, a bit of confabulation is at work here. Uh, so I don't know but what I've said to certain researchers are saying well surely surely this Philip should I said no it's what this gentleman is saying is impossible I'm not saying the memo's fake or anything like that I'm not saying it wasn't briefed by the CIA all I'm saying is it was impossible for him to have seen the exact same thing in 19, the 1980s because it wasn't made until 1995 Simple as that, you know, and, and and that's what's got people excited. Oh, if Doctor if Doctor Kit Green says it's so, then it must be. I believe, uh, he, he, from what I've been told by a colleague, that that Doctor Green has since reversed that uh, that scenario. But I'm, we're waiting a full statement for him, so I won't go any further. Uh, what I did when I received these. Um, this, this document before it went online, I contacted someone that's named in it. I'm, I'm not going to give his name. He's asked, he, he, he's asked me not to, but he's one of those named in the document. And I just said, is it real? Is it authentic? And he said, yeah. Uh, and I said, well, what about your comments on the alien autopsy film? He says, since that time, our, our comments have been reversed. In other words, they no longer believe it's, it's real. Well, that's fine. And I, and I left it at that, you know, and um, I don't have the contact details for Dr. Kit Green. Someone's already in contact with him, so I would suggest we leave it with him. 
uh, and let's let him get a full statement from him and then take it from there. But there is no way he can have seen the same thing in the 1980s. It's as simple as that. And of course, you know, people are reinventing the wheel now, Orion, and santilli has been on the phone. I saw one gentleman announce that they'd spoken to Ray Santilli as if it was some, you know, great task trying to get hold of him, as if Santilli had been a hermit in a cave somewhere for 20 years and couldn't be located. All they had to ask, do is ask me. I'll give you his phone number. I'll give you his email address. I'll give you his address where he lives, if need be. Um, you know, for research purposes only, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't give it out willy-nilly, but it's no big deal. I've, I've been in sporadic contact with him on and off down the years, you know. So, I, But the, it, there was this great triumph. Of, oh, we've spoken to Ray Santilli, and if it's something marvellous, I, I don't think so. But anyway... You know, if they want to reinvent the wheel, it's, you know, it's up to them. And I, I think you're absolutely right. Some people, there's a point where they hear if somebody worked for the Central Intelligence Agency that, you know, like you said, they're, they're wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Is I, I like that comment you said that it's all cloak and dagger. And it seems like a lot of these stories, they were using a lot of that cloak and dagger to get out of any kind of real basis. Um, and they emphasize that path. Uh, now, Dr. Kit Green, I mean, there was like a lot he was involved with that could it be that he just saw so much weird stuff come across the weird desk um, that he was more apt to believe? Well, I, I don't know. I, I can't comment on, on Mr. Green. I don't know him. I've never had any correspondence with him. The way I looked at t- trying to try him, and it's not, 100% scientific to, to authenticate the document was first ask someone that's named in it other than me if it's if it's culture. I did that and they said yes. Then I am briefly mentioned in it uh, where it's when Bob Bigelow run NIDS, the National Institute for Discovery Sciences. Uh, one of the gentlemen involved was Colm Kelleher. Mm-hmm. Colm, you know, I uh, contacted me way back with a few emails. And I put him in, uh, to the best of my recollection, I put him in touch with Sam Tilly. I did that a thousand times with different people, right? And, you know, mainly, mainly the media that would want Ray and they were unable to find him. And uh, what Colm Kelleher says is that Ray Sam Tilly supplied them with a beta cam video of uh, the alien autopsy. Uh, that's a, an industry used uh, type of uh, videotape much better quality than your VHS and so on. From that, they made good quality copies. Well, that 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 kind of fits as well because I knew Ray Salenti, Ray Santilli did that kind of thing simply because he gave me a beta cam copy of the of the the film. I still have it here in my office today. Can't play the damn thing, but I have it. <laughs> but what I did at the time, I gave it to a colleague of mine who worked in the TV. I think it was a TV op, but he certainly had access to the industry equipment. Uh, and he made some very good quality copies of the film, etc., and put them on a CD with Ray's permission that were used then for, for research purposes. And he sent me the tape back, and, and it's still here on my, on my, on my shelf uh, as we speak. So if you put those three things together, yes, the gentleman in it says that they're authentic. I do remember being in, being in contact with Colm Callagher, and sending of a beta cam film is, is how Ray worked. If I put those three things together, kind of leads me that probably, probably the, the, the memo is, is the genuine article. That's all I can say. I can't comment on, on what Kit Green says about being briefed by the CIA several times and shown certain things. You know, I, I have no idea of that. That's, it's not, that's not my, my area. All I can say to, to Dr. Green is that he did not see the same creature uh, as, as on the alien autopsy film back in the 1980s because it is impossible. Now, there may be, you know, just because he is a doctor and a PhD, um, you know, he's still human at the end of the day, you know, and he still has human frailties like the rest of us do. Every one of us has. So, you know, maybe confabulation is at work here again. I don't know. That's just a guess. It's just an idea. I'm not making any accusations. I certainly don't see any reason why the gentleman would lie. Um, but like I said, uh, a colleague of mine is hoping to get a full statement from Dr. Green. So I, I think it's best we wait until that happens. And we'll, and we'll see. 
we'll, we'll, we'll see what he has to say. And then we can take it from there, can't we? Absolutely. And it's absolutely fascinating, the, the twists and turns and historically the way this thing has meandered because a lot of the connections are, are there. And, you know, like you said, people have mysticized Kit Green to the, I mean, he's been likened to the smoking man on the X-Files that that was, <laughs> you know, that is actually based on him. There's so much le- legend and myth surrounding this entire subject. And it's, it's interesting with the uh, Edgar Mitchell files being released because that in a way, it, it almost seems like there's a dump of sorts. And, and when you go down mm-hmm. the, the Santilli, the Ray Santilli Road, there's connections um, to Pandolfi, Ron Pandolfi, and then there's connections to Grant Cameron. And then Grant Cameron actually, if I'm not mistaken, is very involved with these Edgar Mitchell files. And then, like you said, when the Bigelow organization becomes involved, it just kind of blows the lid right off of everything. And it, it becomes a free-for-all because you have names like Eric Davis involved, Colm Kelleher, the National Institute for Discovery Science. And this these, these are people that are, you, you know, at face value taken um, quite seriously, at least in their prospective genre. And... It, it seems like, it, at least in my opinion, it seems like with all of the recent media disclosure, if we want to call it that, um, with the To The Stars Academy, which brings in um, a whole other arm of individuals who are working together, it seems. And uh, it, it, when, you, when you bring this all together, it seems like this media inundation of, of UFO you know, the Nimitz, the Tic Tac, the Gimbal. And it's, it's, it's bringing an authenticity to it, yet um, it seems that everything is being thrown at the populace, so to speak, at the same time. And, and I know at the time that this came out, this Edgar Mitchell file, the week before there were some issues with, I believe, Lou Elizondo. There were questions, or it was questionable as ties to the Pentagon, even though there were ties. And I don't want to get into all that. I know that lose a stand-up guy and I've met him but I think that a lot of people are being used but they don't know it and and what I mean by that is just because things are thrown on mainstream media like you know here we had the legitimacy of the Navy pilots uh, I'm sorry the pilots seeing the UFOs and uh And then immediately, you know, that's by the New York Times, the Washington Post, Mm -hmm. all mainstream. And then immediately afterwards, we have the Edgar Mitchell files, which brings all kinds of stuff about craft, which we haven't even gotten into. But then these bodies and it brings in the alien autopsy film and all of a sudden everything's at the forefront and everybody's expected to just accept it. And I wonder, you know, I'm glad that it's it's you know, this is being questioned because we, we, we shouldn't just... Well, I mean, I mean, Ryan, I mean, you know, what disappoints me is that uh, I'm pretty well known within the UFO industry, if you want to call it that. Mm-hmm. And I would have thought, you know, I would have been the first port of call for those wanting to check what was happening when, once these um, this memo had, had, had been leaked out. But, you know, none of the people that you've mentioned there ever bothered to contact me. I did it in reverse. Um, and I watched, you know, Linda Molnar Howe's uh, piece on this. It goes for about an hour and a half, and she believes it hook, line, and sinker. And um, all she's done is regurgitate all the tall tales told by Santilli and his colleagues. You know, no no checking. Oh, what, what I've said to, to, to anybody is that you don't have to believe me. You can do your own checks. You know, I'll mention the people involved. You can go and check up what I'm saying. You know, I had no reason uh, to debunk this film. I might not, my reputation was on the line with this film. I was even at one point called uh, Ray Santilli's accomplice, you know, and people question. <coughs> I'll, give you an, I'll give you an example. At the time, Ryan, when, when the, the, the film hit the, the headlines, uh, my wife and I were having an extension built on our house. Some people said, well, where did Mantle get the money for that? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. He doesn't have that kind of money. Well, they were right. I didn't. My wife did. 
you know. She was an independent lady. Before we were married, she had her own property, which we'd sold and used some of the money of it to build an extension, you know, where we were currently living. But it was wink, wink, nudge, nudge, you know. And uh, I, I remember having lunch with Sam Tilly in London one day, and I just said, you know, Ray, uh, I'll get to the bottom of this film one way or another. And he just smiled and said, that's okay with me, Philip. And, you know, and that was it. So it, it was made personal as far as I was concerned, uh, Ryan. And um, I, I was determined that no matter how long it took, I would get to the bottom of it. Uh, and, of course, I did. It just took me a long time. Um, so it, it kind of disappoints me when just because of a, 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 a memo that hasn't been authenticated yet, people have taken it at face value and, you know, they really should know better. And they're uh, listening to Gary Shufield and Ray Santilli's lies, because that's what they are, all over again. Oh, Ray's promised me some film and now technology is much better today. And we can test his film. Well, the technology, I won't have changed that much. You know, like I said, um, Kodak needed a couple of frames of film uh, to to uh, test. And they were literally within a stone's throw from where Santilli lived. He could have gone and hand-delivered it. But uh, the fact that he didn't speaks volumes. And he won't because he can't. He only, I mean, the film was shot on 16 millimeter. But contemporary film, you can go buy 16 millimeter film now, Ryan, if you like, mm -hmm. buy 8 millimeter, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And um, so if you were to test the film, then it would come up as being 1995, not 1947. Ray makes all kinds of excuses. He will tell you sometimes he hasn't got any film, and then he'll say, yes, he has, no, he hasn't. Uh, I'm not sure where, what his latest story is, whether he still claims to have a bit or, or he doesn't. It, it, you know, it depends who he speaks to, really. The story changes. Mm -hmm. And it does It does seem like there's a lot of smoke and mirrors. Uh, and, and, you know, with the Ron Pandolfi, Kit Green, UF, UFO CIA connection, and where there's this implied top secretness, there's, there's, you know, just wild stuff out there. There's mind control. Um, there's ties to you know, SRI, Scientology, and you have a lot of these same names, um, Hal Putoff, Targ, and, uh, you know, now Putoff is with the To The Stars Academy, and, and so there are these connections um, when, you, when you look at them, and it, it's very interesting how, how the information is getting out to the mainstream. It's, it's, it really is kind of like, you know, Anything can just about make it, it. It's like fake news, I guess. <laughs> you know? Well, it, you know, I mean, like, like I say, what you know, the the, the the documents that have recently been been re released have still yet to be authenticated. Um, but some people have taken them at face value. They've also taken. I was listening to uh, an interview with Santilli's business partner the other day. He's called Gary Shufield. He lives in and works in the states. And, and he's telling them stories. And I'm, I'm thinking, well, ask him the question. Ask him the question. You know, he said other experts check the film for authenticity. Well, ask him who the experts were. And they just sit there, you know, and don't say a word. Oh, we've agreed with Santelli to have the film tested in Hollywood. Well, good luck, mate, because it will never happen. You'll be sat here waiting in another 20 years and he'll give you another whole host of excuses as why you can't do it. You know, uh, and I just shake my head. I've said, look, what you really should have had is when you were speaking to Shufield, he's had me on the line with him, you know, and, and I'll ask him the questions. You know, if you're going to speak to Santilli, I volunteer to do the same thing. In all likelihood, if you tell Ray Santilli or Shufield that I'm one of the guests listening in and going to be asking questions, they'll refuse anyway. So what does that say, you know? Mm -hmm. Um but uh, it, it, it will be interesting to see where, where, the, where, this, where the story goes, Ryan. Like I said, you know, uh, I, I remember telling Spiros Milaris, who, who when he, he, he came forward, um, knew nothing about, in, in, in any great detail, of how much success uh, the alien autopsy film had been. He was astonished. 
And I said to him then, it will never go away. And he didn't quite believe me, I don't think. But but now he does. Um, because, the, you know, it's just, it's so ingrained into popular culture, Ryan. You know, I've seen it in the States, they've made alien autopsy Halloween cakes. You know, <laughs> um, there's one of the dummies was on display here in the UK. Somebody made a poor copy of it, but it was on display. There's one in... In a, in a place in Japan, you know, a, a copy of the of the of the creature. So it, it's never going to go away, uh, but it's 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 raised its ugly head again now. Uh, and I'm just, I'd love to make a documentary charting the alien autopsy from its from its genesis. And I know the man, you know, that, that that first mentioned, let's make some alien autopsy film as a bit of a joke, you know. Uh, right, and I'd love to chart it right the way through to these documents that's being released, um, so everyone can see it, you know, and, and they can double check themselves. They don't have to believe me, you know. Uh, but whether that will happen, I doubt. But it would be nice. It would be nice. Um, so any documentary people listening, you know, there, there's an idea for you, and uh, and we'll, we'll see what happens. Absolutely, and I'm just, I'm just. I feel so blessed for you to, you know, when you mentioned, you know, that people aren't, you you were the first person that came to mind um, as far as contacting, in my opinion, and I'm sure you did uh, among other people who haven't been heard. So it's, it's, as far as, you know, keeping tempo with reality, I think that's what's important right now that we're so inundated in all this information. We have to know what's false and what's real and I, I can't think of anybody better than yourself to, you know, with your connections and history. And I mean, the number of books that you've written. On... Yeah, well, what I've, what I've said, Ryan, and I, I've said to anyone who's interested, just contact me and I will give you a free PDF copy of my book. No catches, no sales, no promotions. There's no catch to it. And you can read, you know, everything in the book. Uh, and if you want, the names are there, the things are there, you can double check it for yourself, or you can, you can just delete it. It's entirely up to you. What is interesting is that certain individuals that have had, you know, podcasts and so on, uh, I've emailed them all and said, I'll, I'll gladly discuss this with you, or, you know, uh, on your show, but they haven't taken up the offer. Well, you know, I think that speaks volumes as well mm -hmm. uh, it's like if I was going to do a, a, a radio show about Roswell well I know the main Roswell researchers are sadly one of them is no longer with us in, in Stan Friedman so you perhaps go to Kevin Randall or Don Schmidt or you know that, that would be obvious mm -hmm. so you know and, and, and if they you know if they contacted me about something I'd gladly take them up on their offer it would be stupid not to but like I say I have emailed Various individuals who've, who've been, you know, uh, making various statements about this film, and I've said I'll, I'll gladly discuss this with you. Mm -hmm. uh, but so far, no takers. <laughs> sometimes, yeah. Sometimes it, it's the the truth is not as important as the you know convenient ig ignorance, you know, or a glamorization of what's not you know true. So. It's, I think, you know, the better idea we have a truth, the better idea we know what's going on. And, and you know, there's definitely a mystery surrounding all of this. And it, it's just intriguing how long this mystery has, you know, and, and wild claims have gone on. I, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on. Um, and, it's a pleasure, Ryan. I mean, I have a huge, literally, right next to me is, a, is an old metal filing cabinet. So all my research is in there. I had it all scanned in a couple of years back. A, a colleague by the name of Steve Mirror scanned it all in for me. So I was going through some of the scans last night. So it's all condensed into my book, or pretty much all of it, because a lot of it is just correspondence. There's no, no factual information in it. Because um, this was the days, of course, before, like I said, before email. Um, most of it. And... Um, like I said, somebody said, well, you, you know, what can you do to, to, to have this information available, Philip? I said, all I can do is make my book free of charge. You know, if, if anybody wants to contact me and would like a PDF, I must have sent out already over 100 copies, uh, and that will stay on, on, on the table 
uh, indefinitely. If anybody wants a, a free PDF copy of my book, just contact me, and, and you can have one with the greatest of pleasure. It's not a trick, it's not a con, it's just a book. Yeah, uh, and you can either read it or delete it, whatever. What is interesting, I sent it to all those that have been making comments about it as well, and I said, yeah, I think you better... I think you better read my book first. It, it would seem that you haven't, you know. No, no disrespect. Uh, I think you need to be up to date. But if it, what can I say, Ryan? You know, I'm, I'm not going to call anybody any names. That would be counterproductive. All I can say is, uh, if anyone in, in ufology today would want the alien autopsy film to be real, it would be me. I spent... 14 years investigating it, put in thousands of hours. I have no idea how much money it cost me um, because Ray's, like I say, is 200 miles from us. That's nothing in America, I know, but it's, it, it's you know, I, I used to go to his offices once a month, drive there, um, take time off work. You, I mean, you name it. Uh, I would... I used to work, I was a technician in a factory. I, I would work 12 hours in the factory. The following day, I, w I would work 12 hours on the alien autopsy film. Such was the, the, the commitment. And um, so if it's, you know, and I was accused, as I've said, of all kinds of things. So if there's anybody who would, would want to say, oh, oops, I got it wrong, you know, it is real after all, it would be me. But unfortunately, that's not the case. I'm not wrong. I, I never set out to debunk anything. I just followed where the evidence led me. And sometimes it just led me round and round in circles and getting nowhere. But I kept at it. Uh, and somebody said, oh, you know, do you, I've been asked this question a few times. Do you think, you know, you followed your suffered because this film turned out to be a fake? I said, no, I don't actually. Because there were a number of people, quite rightly, Dismissed it as a hoax from day one. But dismissing it and proving it is, is two different things. There's nothing really that obvious on that film that you can point at, Ryan, and say, aha, there, look, look at that. That shows you it's a fake. You know, they're not wearing a digital wristwatch, or, you know, or some, whatever. So just to say it's a fake is the easiest thing to do. Um, and I said, at the end of the day, it was a UFO researcher that doggedly stuck at this and finally got, got to the bottom of it all. And that researcher was, of course, me. I was assisted by colleagues down the years. Mark Center in the US is, is, is one of the main ones. Uh, people you've probably never heard of, Tim Matthews in the UK, Odgar Road in Norway, Maurizio Baiata in Italy, Michael Hesseman in Germany, and, and, and a, number of, a number of others. Um, uh, but... I just followed the evidence, and eventually, the evidence led down a road where we chip. What I used to say to myself, Ryan, is that would, every now and again I would shake the alien autopsy tree and see what fell out of it. Sometimes nothing did, but sometimes little gems did, and I followed them. And once I got on the trail, you know, I wasn't going to let up. Uh, and once, once we found out and proved that, despite what Santillis may say. That the alien, or, uh, sorry, that the tent footage was a fake, and I spoke to the individuals in person and their employees who were also involved. Then I thought, well, if Santilli's prepared to have this film as a fake, then what does it say about the rest of it? And then don't forget, we've, we've kind of forgotten about it. Santilli was under a lot of pressure to produce something about the cameraman. So he came out with what is called the cameraman's interview. It's an old boy with a hat on and glasses, sat in front of a camera, it's dimly lit, and he's got a list of questions that have been supplied to him, and he just answers them. And that's it. But it's filmed on video. So even though it's, it's dimly lit, you can just, you just turn up the brightness and see the guy's face, <laughs> you know? This was delivered, or a copy of it was delivered to TV producer Bob Kibbeer, Bob made uh, Alien Autopsy Fact or Fiction. Um, and of course, it's a fake. It's, it's an old boy they picked up off the street and stuck a false nose on him. And they just said, yeah, read this out. So, you know, they give him the answers to the questions already. And it was filmed in America. 
And Bob will tell you that again. Don't have to believe me. Go and ask Bob Kivitt. He'll tell you how it all transpired. So there you've got the temp footage being proven a fake. You've got the cameraman's interview, which hardly anybody has seen, by the way, Ryan. It was actually... And they'll say, oh, well, well, um, um, we did, um, they actually sold it to TV in Japan and it was shown on Japanese television. And there is a copy of it online, complete with Japanese subtitles running across the bottom of it. <laughs> so, so Santilli even sold another fake film. So they, they're at both ends, you know, they're your bookends, tent footage, fake. Wow. Cameraman's interview, fake. So what does it say about the other three films, the two autopsies and the debris footage? Mm-hmm. They're, fa- they're also fake, you know? And uh, like I say, oh, oh, well, let's go down the restoration. Why would you make two? There are two. And he doesn't mention it. Now, again, when they, when they were talking to Shufield the other day, I'm thinking, ask him the question. Ask him, ask him about the other autopsy film and see what excuse to give for that. They'll have an excuse for it. Don't get me wrong. But if you think of it logically, there's no reason to make two. No. You know, when, when Ray did a, a documentary called uh, Alien Autopsy, Eamon Investigates. Eamon Holmes is a, is a well-known TV presenter here in the UK. And they made this uh, prior to their movie coming out. And it was then that Santilli changed his story, saying, well, the film's not real. We told you everything that you see on there is real. Uh, and by the way, it's not. It's actually a restoration, and we, we put bits of film in it. And well, if, if you made one restoration, why did you make two? Or why wouldn't you show the other one? I've seen it. So they'll, they'll have some, you know, some tall tale as, as to why they can't and, and so on, but it doesn't make any sense, does it? No, no. There's, there's, there's so much of this that, that doesn't. And it's, it's just fascinating how... It just seems like, you know, if you if you have anything to say about it and it's not glorifying it, that it's just kind of swept under the rug. And um, that's what makes me wonder if there aren't factions that are more interested in disinformation than information. Well, I, I don't know where the, the, you know, the memos come from. I don't know. Who, maybe it's come from the Edgar Mitchell archives. I, I don't know. That's what some people are speculating. And it is only speculation, I, I, I'll say that. But who leaked it? You know, who has access to this information and who leaked it and why did they do that? But I'll let others answer that question. You know, uh, th- this obviously happened in the US, so it's only right. It's, it's pointless 20 of us trying to find the same answer. If there's, if there's one or two of that are already on the trail, let them get on with it and, and see what happens. Um, so, you know, you know the 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 story of the memos that have been released, the backstory is just as important. Is A, where did they come from? And why were they released? And who leaked them? You know, so that, that's an important part of the story, which I'm, I'm sure will unravel at some point. Mm-hmm. But I'll just stick with what I know, and that's the alien autopsy film. And, and I, again, you see silly comments on, on, online, um, what do you know about it, Mal? <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, there's a whole generation, you know, grown up, not because it hasn't been in, in the public eyes, you know, it's still debated and discussed, you know, on various little Facebook pages and so on. And I, and I just shrugged my shoulders, you know, I, I, what can I say? I can't, I can't say to that individual, this is what I've learned over 14 years because I would, it would take me forever to write it. All I can say is, look, you can have a free copy of my book. Uh, I've got better things to do with my time. I really have. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, uh, so the accusations are already, are already there. I, 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 you know, I don't blame the individuals in question. They, 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 they can't know everything about every UFO case or every piece of film. You know what I mean? I understand that. But just use a little bit of courtesy. That that would be that would be better. Uh, and say, sorry, I don't know. I don't know of your involvement in it, Mister Mallow. Could you tell us? Well, that, you know, that would be the way to approach it. Not just say, "Oh, shut up! You're a debunker." I'm not a debunker. Correct. I just followed the the the, the research, and, and and this is what I found, uh, which is what we're supposed to do, is it not, Ryan? This is exactly what we're supposed to do. 
This is, and if at the end of the day it turns out to be fake, it's fake. If it was real, it's real. But on this occasion, it took me a long time, but it's fake. Oh, it's wonderful that this is, this is you know, if this is why it's considered, like you said, ufology, like the greats and like Stanton Friedman. And, you know, if you don't have the opinion to and need to find the truth about something and you're just going to blindly believe it, then it, it's just all fantasy and, 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 and fairy tale. And yeah, yeah, this is important. We, well, you've, you've mentioned a gentleman there who was widely regarded and widely respected Stan Friedman, God bless him. Uh, I actually arranged for Stan to meet Stan Tilly, and he did. Uh, and I think he, they may have exchanged emails or faxes or whatever as well. And uh, this, you know, you don't, again, don't have to believe me if you if you like Stan. Well, you'll, you'll find a little video of Stan. I think it runs for about seven or eight minutes, listing the reasons why he thought Stan Tilly was talking a load of baloney. And again, don't have to believe me. There's one of the, you know, the, the most well-respected individuals that's ever been in the subject. You can listen to what he has to say, if you like, uh, you know. And I sent that little video, plus a few other things, to a collection of those reinventing the wheel. And uh, no comment from them, <laughs> you know. No comment. But, you know, I met Stan many times and, um, uh, uh, and spoke to him. Uh, even, yeah, you know, even had, you know, dinner with him on, on a couple of occasions um so he you know he knows he knew all about the alien autopsy film and, and he, he said you know it's, it's fake so i think i think what he found is even in one of his books as mm -hmm. well I, um, I forget which one off the top of me but i know he said it's, it's all, all his because he was the one was stan when santilli said uh you could see president truman on it so stan you know thought, right, well, that's something I can check. So mm -hmm. he went to the Truman Library and checked the, the diary for President Truman for the dates given to Ray Santilli, and he was all accounted for. You know, there was no missing pages in the diary or any blank bits or anything like that. All his appointments were there. So Santilli just fobbed it off like it, like it is with anything else. You know, President Truman wasn't there. <laughs> it's a, another lie. It's 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 a mysterious web of it, it's just intri it's intriguing and you know it's just it's so refreshing to get someone with s so much of the detail and so much history and I, I just can't thank you enough for carving out the time out of your day, uh, Mr. Mantle, to to speak with us and and kind of set the record straight. Um, and for those who you know don't want the pdf and you want the uh like me i like the paper you know the actual hard actual book i like the paper book <laughs> so i can like look at it anytime i want and you know you can find them on amazon as well uh, i think they're like 12 bucks they're not bad they're not not for the information inside um and a ton of other books that uh you you've written i was just astounded by the Amount. Well, yeah, because I'm I'm now a small time publisher, Ryan. This is my only commercial plug. I run a, a one man operation called Flying Disc Press, and I've been publishing books by other authors as well um, for a few years now, uh, from different parts of the world. One of the things I wanted to do was to try, whenever possible, to provide information from parts of the world that perhaps you know you weren't familiar with as far as ufology was concerned. So the first book I published was from Poland, for example, followed up by one from Romania, and I've done another one from Italy. So, you know, all the books are pretty different. Um, we even had a bestseller, which was uh, Calvin Parker's book. Calvin was one of the two guys of the early abduction at Pascagoula uh, on October the 11th, 1973. Calvin's book is called The Closest Encounter, and it was an Amazon bestseller. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in the process of updating that because that's a, a, a whole other story, Brian. We found lots of new information about that particular event. Uh, and literally, the weekend that's just, just gone, um, the town of Pascagoula unveiled an official historic memorial, a marker to the event. Uh, and it was uh, done by the mayor. Uh, and Calvin, of course, was present. And along with uh, some of Charlie Hickson's family, Charlie died in 2011. So 
So that's my only commercial plug. And it's it's a good plug because it's an amazing website with you know great books on there, and definitely um, I hope we speak again. I'm sure we'll we'll see more of this come to fruition, and 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 just many many thanks. And I'm honored to have you uh, speak with us. Thank you so much, Mr. Mantle. It's my pleasure, Ryan. And l- let's see where the story goes, shall we? All right. Have a great one. Bye bye now. Take care. All the best. Bye bye and gentlemen, Philip Mantle's uh, opinion on this scenario, which we've all been scratching our heads about. We're talking about what amazing research this guy's done. He's been, you know, involved since 1979 with this UFO research and part of the British UFO Research Association, the Yorkshire UFO Society. He's appointed to the Council of Management of all kinds of, you know, subsequential uh, press officers and organizers and secretaries to the National Investigations Committee. I mean, just not somebody who's going to pull your chain. And um, it's just really refreshing to have somebody that is as busy as he is and as involved as he is take time out of their day to talk to somebody like me about this. But I, I, I'm so happy that he did because it's, you know, we're seeing a lot of the same names come up. Um, I think he mentioned Bob Kiviat and uh, we've got Ray Santelli, Kate Green with connections to Ron Pandolfi. Um, this goes, I mean, the, the, the entanglement and the connections of how this information is disseminated and how some of the disinformation is just spoon fed is fascinating to me uh it really is an information war and i kind of wish you know a lot of people have said this i wish alex jones wouldn't have got that but that's exactly you know wouldn't have got that website or that name but he was you know at the time he knew what this was and that's really what we're talking about is an information war regardless of your opinion of alex jones but there are information wars on either side which in my opinion could be the same side because really and truly the higher you get up and the more this is about power money and control the uh, politics go out the window this is really and truly um, a situation of information wars and disinformation wars and philip mantle has really you know done his homework he has been extremely active and when it comes to knowing his thing, without a doubt, uh, this was, in my opinion, the person to talk to about this situation and give us a clear understanding of the history. Um, like he said, I mean, he's so altruistic. He's willing to give his book away for free. Uh, I highly recommend buying it on Amazon. I believe it's twelve ninety nine. Good book, good read, and... Um, yeah, it's 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 just the reality of truth. So I feel so blessed to have the man with the plan, Philip Mantle, come on and just drop knowledge and uh, spread truth. That That's just, I, I'm appreciative of that. And thank you for all listening in. You guys have to support me a little bit. I was looking, my gosh, we're dropping bombs left and right. Stuff about the epicenter of the Uinta Basin going off, hitting on topics of the uh, Edgar Mitchell um, leaks, um, speaking with ex NIDS scientists, talking with NDA holders at particular facilities. I am going out of my way. And I was looking at the other day, I haven't got $1 of patronage. So I don't know. Maybe I'll have to like reformat this. But if you have a chance, go to heroparanormal.podbean.com. Throw a guy a dollar. Throw me a bone. I'll keep going. And um, like tonight, I had to get up at like 2 in the morning to prefer, prepare for uh, this interview because our time differences are just so different. And um, I wanted to make sure and get the information to you guys uh, as soon as I got it. And I think that's important in this community. I was speaking with... Um, some other uh, people and researchers who are checking things out. And we've, we've decided that, yeah, there's just not enough of us questioning the status quo and 
asking the difficult questions um, to get the answers that we need uh, to make informed choices. You know, this isn't all just conspiracy 24 seven. I'm all for conspiracy, but there's an important task at hand and that's just, you know, drawing the line between reality and uh, what's not. So thanks so much for listening. Check us out. We got uh, t-shirts, hats, and some other stuff on heroparanormal.com. You can also um, check out what else is going on there. You can, I believe, link uh, up to the podcast as well. And we're also putting our podcast on YouTube too. So make sure and subscribe on YouTube. Um, you can find all that through our Facebook and social media stuff. And that's usually done through Hero Paranormal on Facebook or SWR on Facebook, which stands for Space Wolf Research. You'll find out what that's about literally in about two weeks, which is super crazy, crazy stuff that I can't even tell you where this this is going, this research perspective. And the podcast will be there. Um, there's also, uh, more stuff coming out that I, I probably shouldn't talk too much about, but if you go on our social media sites, Hero Paranormal and on Facebook and SWR on Facebook, you'll find more out about it. Also check us out, grab a hat, grab a t-shirt at heroparanormal.com. There's also stuff there from the Utah UFO hunters and Dave Rosenfeld, and we'll be soon to have other things on there too, from other, uh, local researchers. Anyway, support us any way you can. And if you're needing to download a podcast and you're jumping on a flight or something like that, go to heroparanormal.podbean.com. And I need a second cup of coffee because it's, I don't know, about five in the morning here. And I just, I'm, I'm still kind of just excited about talking to Philip. What a wealth of knowledge. Support the guy. Go to Amazon, buy his book. Um, go to the Flying Disc Press, um, great website, and it's theflyingdiscpress.blogspot.com, or if you just Google Flying Disc Press, that will take you there. Philip Mantle, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening in. <laughs> Blast off in my time machine Sir, I feel like it need Vizine Blast off, blast off, blast off, blast off Come blast off in my time machine Sir, I feel like it need Vizine Blast off, blast off, blast off, blast off.